All right, so my next little thing here is I want to animate this just a little bit to show you how to trigger animations later on. I already showed you how to do that via the crane, but um, I just want to make sure that you know it's good review. Repetition is good. So in here, what I want to do is pick out a frame and I'm going to say, let's say at 100 frames, no, let's say, yeah, 30 frames. Because when you shoot a gun, it's going to be quick. Okay. So here, for frame 1 to 30, let's do one arm at a time. And I'm just going to make a small adjustment. So I'm going to grab the bone, and I'm going to hit S on the keyboard. And then I'm going to go up to 30 and hit S on the keyboard. And then on frame uh, 15, what I want to do is rotate this up just a skosh. Okay? Doesn't take much. S on the keyboard. So now this is what this does. Boom, boom. Okay, now I want to do the complete opposite to the other arm. So I'm going to go into my other view here. Go to frame one, go back into my side view, and rotate it up some. S on the keyboard, and then S on the keyboard. And then at frame 15, what I want to do is zero out that part. So I'll take the zero transformation node and zero it out, and then hit S on the keyboard. Usually, you know, as Again, you know, I don't like using S too much. I like, there's a, a rotation one that I could have done. So if I really wanted that bone to stay true later on, if I use Tracks Editor, which I doubt, you know, I, why would you use Tracks Editor for a 2D character? I would never know unless you do walk cycles or something like that maybe. But again, if you, if you want to redeem all the other transforms off of it, just in case that, you just grab every bone and you can hit um, the break connection to the the actual rotations and everything else. So now it should work quite well. Um, I can all translates are gone. So I'm going to undo that though because I have no qualm about using it whatsoever for this. I'm not going to be using tracks editor, but that's a way to get rid of it. So now I have this. Yeah. So what does an animation limit you to? Well, if, if you look at this character right now, I would say the animation is limited to a 90 degree angle or, a, or a horizontal plane. I mean, if he's shooting, he's only shooting right here. How does he know if the character, well, let's say the character is this small right here. How does he know to aim down further onto the character by triggering another animation called aim lower? So that's the only thing bad about animation sequences is it doesn't contain uh, the information needed unless you made a lot of them and switched it from, okay, if the, if the character is right here and it's within a ray cast of, you know, some kind of negative on the Y or corresponding to this bone, aim down. I mean, that's a lot of code. Uh, I could also, you know, construe it as, you know, he can tip tilt which he has a very limited basis on tilt he can do this all right that's what animation kind of limits you to so that's why i kind of look at scripting is you know a little bit more powerful method of doing that and that's why i wanted to show you that box with the arrow because now if you think about it i don't have to animate aim lower I just have to have the character right here and the, the guns will naturally go to the character. So this is just a way of showing you how to trigger an animation, but I doubt I'm ever, ever going to use this animation because it's kind of limiting. The other thing, the other animation that you might want to consider is a walk cycle. Again, that's a little bit more complex because you know, you'd have to cut the character up a little bit more and I didn't really have time to do that. But it's totally doable. So he's just going to slide. If I wanted to really make it believable, I guess I could put him on a skateboard or a dolly or something. All right. So that's it. That is animation 101. And let's go on to now exporting out the character.